Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Math 301, Introduction to Combinatorial Theory. And today we're going to be talking about section 7.4, which is about solving recurrence relations using generating functions. And this is one of the main reasons we wanted to do generating functions right after the recurrence relation chapter, because generating functions are a great way of finding a closed form solution for recurrence relations. So uh, this is a hard section, and so there are several videos about it. There are two methods uh, to do this solution using generating functions, and this video is about one of the methods, and the other video is about the other. So we're going to today look at the Fibonacci series, which was the first recurrence relation that we looked at in chapter six, and find the closed form formula for that Fibonacci series using uh, using generating functions. Okay, so let's remember how the Fibonacci series started out. Uh, we have the first Fibonacci number being one and the second Fibonacci number being one. Actually, sometimes people like to include uh, the zeroth Fibonacci number as being zero. And then remember that this recurrence relation was that Fn equals Fn minus one plus Fn minus two, meaning each entry in the sequence is the sum of the two previous entries as long as n is greater than two. Okay, so for example, and three is one plus two, five is two plus three, and so on. And in the book, there's this discussion about the closed form formula. So this is a recurrence relation. And using this recurrence relation, we can recursively find all the Fibonacci numbers, but that will be very slow. And so it's nice to have a closed form formula. And it turns out the closed form formula is that Fn is one over the square root of five times a uh, golden ratio, which is one plus root five over two raised to the power n minus the conjugate of the golden ratio, which is one minus root five over two raised to the n. All right, and so we wanna figure out where in the world did this closed form formula come from how can we use the recurrence relation to find the closed form formula? So this generating function strategy has three steps. Uh, the first step is to cancel. The second step is partial fractions. And the third step is using geometric series. So as I was looking at this, I wondered what does CPG stand for? It turns out it stands for consumer packaged goods. And so that didn't seem like a great acronym. So I thought we should just change it a little bit. So um, to solve using partial fractions. And then we will uh, understand the metric series leading to a great acronym, CSU. Okay, so let's see how this, how this works. We first need to write down what the generating function is for this Fibonacci series. And so let's move to a new page because this is gonna take a lot of space. So the way we're gonna write down, remember anytime you have a sequence of values, the way you find the generating function is you plug in those, those values I guess we used capital Fs before. And we plug those in as the coefficients on a power series. So this is a polynomial that keeps on going forever. It's a power series. So for example, we have these, these terms. Okay, so we know what some of these values are for the Fibonacci series. We have zero. The first Fibonacci number was one, so this gives us an x. The second Fibonacci number was also one, so this gives us x squared. The third Fibonacci number was two, so we get two x cubed. 
The next one was three, so we get three to the x fourth, and then it keeps on going forever. All right, so what is the, what, how are we gonna do the cancel step? The idea with the canceling step is that we wanna remember, we wanna remember that we have this recurrence relation. And what it tells us is that, that F, let's say F2 is F1 plus F0, and F3 is F2 plus F1, F4 is F3 plus F2. So what our strategy is going to be is to shift these coefficients to the right uh, and then shift them two to the right and then use this recurrence relation to cancel everything off. Remember this, we're right now doing the cancel step. All right, so in other words, what, what does that mean? So we're gonna write down, let's write down f of x again. All right, and now we're gonna, we're gonna shift all the coefficients to the right. So this coefficient is zero and then one. We wanna shift them to the right. So we wanna put the zero here. We wanna put the first one here. Here, we wanna put the second one here. We wanna put the two here. And then we wanna shift them two to the right. And each of these keeps on going forever. And then notice what's going on. This three is the one plus two. And the two is the one plus one. I should have added on another term so that would be more convincing. What's the next one gonna be? Well, this will be a five. This one will be a three. And this one will be a two. And five is the sum of these two. So, so what we're seeing is that by shifting, we're gonna get each coefficient in front of each monomial, each power of X to be the sum of the two that are below it. And that's because uh, this is an, uh, because of this recursive relation. All right, so what do we need to do to shift everything to the right? Well, we just need to multiply by x. Because that, that takes our term x and replaces it with x squared. It takes our term x squared and replaces it with x cubed. Multiplying by x shifts everything to the right multiplying by x squared, then shifts everything to the right twice. All right, and then what we're gonna do is take this entire infinite sum in the first line, subtract the entire infinite sum in the second line, and then subtract the entire infinite sum on the third line. So what will we have on the left, one minus x minus x squared, f of x. And what will we have on the right? Well, here we've got zero. Here we have x minus zero x minus zero x squared. So that's just gonna be an x. But then starting at that point, everything else cancels. This is the canceling step. So we have x squared minus x squared, so that's zero. We're gonna have two x cubed minus x cubed minus x cubed, that's zero. Next term, is three x the fourth plus two minus two x the fourth minus x the fourth, that's zero. And so on and so on forever, we get lots of zeros. So by doing all this canceling, we've now found, we've gotten rid of those infinitely many terms and we can now express f of x as being x over one minus x minus x squared. Good, okay, so the next step, um, the next step is to solve using partial fractions. So you may remember partial fractions from Calc 2. 
So here we have f of x being x over one minus x minus x squared. All right, well, turns out the first thing you need to do using partial fractions is to factor the denominator. And it turns out that this denominator factors as one minus alpha x times one minus alpha bar x, where alpha is the golden ratio, one plus root five over two, and alpha bar is its conjugate, one minus root five over two. Why is that? Well, the numerators are the same, so let's just check the denominators. If we multiply these two terms together with FOIL, we get one minus alpha plus alpha bar x plus alpha alpha bar x squared. And let's see, what is alpha plus alpha bar? Well, if we add alpha and alpha bar together, this positive square root of five cancels with the negative square root of five, and we get one half plus one half, which is one. And if we multiply alpha and alpha bar together, we get one plus root five times one minus root five over two times two, which is one minus five over four, which is negative one. Okay, so this expression then we can plug in that alpha plus alpha bar is one. So we get one minus one X and then plus alpha alpha bar X squared is gonna be minus one times X squared. And that's exactly what we had there. All right, so this, this is a little bit unusual how the golden ratio and its con conjugate showed up in this factorization of the denominator. And it turns out the reason for that is that they are the roots of the characteristic polynomial of the recurrence relation. And we'll see more about that in a few minutes. So, okay, where were we? So we're trying to solve using partial fractions. So remember what partial fractions look like. This is a slightly different from how we, how you might've done it in calculus, but we want to fact, we want to split this up into something, let's call that something a over one minus x plus something, let's call that something b over one minus alpha bar x. And now we want to find a and b. Partial fractions are a real pain. I spent 15 minutes on Sage trying to find a way of programming to get the partial fractions. Uh, and it turns out Sage will find A and B for you in several, you can do it in several different ways. But sometimes the expression is so complicated that like just interpreting what the answer was, I thought was more complicated than just doing it by hand. So let's try to remember how to, how to solve using partial fractions. I'm just gonna erase this here. So it has to do with uh, finding a common denominator. We're gonna find A and B by putting this back together. If we put this back together, we have the same denominator, one minus alpha X times one minus alpha bar X. And our numerator is A times one minus alpha bar X plus B times one minus alpha X. And we want, and so we want a times one minus alpha bar x plus b times one minus alpha x to be equal to x. So that gives us two equations. I'd like to somehow find more space here, but there, there's no more space. So maybe I can write them here. I'm going to I'm going to erase what these two parts here. Okay, so All 
Okay, so now we distribute this, we get an A from the first term plus a B from the second term. That's supposed to be the constant term, which is zero. And we get A times alpha bar, or negative alpha bar, minus B times alpha, and that's all multiplied by X. And so that's supposed to be one times X, which is the linear term. And so what that means is that minus A times, oh, what a pain. All right, let's see. Well, we can just write that negative A is B. So we can write this as B times alpha bar, which is one minus root five over two minus b times alpha, which is one plus root five over two, supposed to be one. This b over two will cancel with minus b over two, and we're left with minus b root five over two times two. So we get that minus b root five should be one. And so that's gonna show us then that, that uh, b has to be, so b has to be negative one over root five. And then that shows us that a has to be one over root five. All right. There's some, some tricks for finding A and B a little bit faster, but in general, partial fractions are a pain. Okay, so we just finished the step of solving using partial fractions. And so now, um, now the next step is to understand geometric series. So, so remember what our what the geometric series is. It's one over one minus x is one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, and so on and so forth. And we had the substitution principle where we could substitute any monomial for x. So in particular, we could substitute alpha x for x, and we'll get one plus alpha x. The next term will be alpha x squared. The next term will be alpha x cubed. And so the coefficients here will be one plus alpha x plus alpha squared x squared plus alpha cubed x cubed and so on forever. So what's important about the geometric series is it gives us a way to take this rational function, rational function means it's one polynomial divided by another polynomial, and re-express it as a power series. And that's what we need to do because the Fibonacci series, the geometric series for the Fibonacci sequence is a power series. So what we've just seen before, we, we, wrote, we wrote f of x as being x over one minus x minus x squared. And then we struggled through the partial fraction method to write this as a, which was one over root five times one minus alpha x minus, uh, plus b. b was minus one over root five times one minus alpha bar x. So we've now written this Fibonacci series as the difference of two geometric series. So let's pull out the one over root five. Notice that that's what we're aiming for. Remember that was like our closed form formula had a one over root five hanging out the front. Times one over one minus alpha x um, minus one over one minus alpha bar x. And now we're gonna, um, 
plug in the generator generating series for this, one minus alpha x is one plus alpha x plus alpha squared, x squared, plus so on and so forth. And then we're gonna subtract off one. Now everywhere we had an alpha, we're gonna put an alpha bar. So we have alpha bar x plus alpha bar squared, x squared, and plus so on and so forth. Okay, so let's, let's collect like terms. So we have one over root five. Uh, the first term cancels, that's one minus one. The next term is going to be alpha minus alpha bar x. Term after that is alpha squared minus alpha bar squared x squared. And in general, coefficient of x to the n is going to be alpha to the n minus alpha bar to the n. But remember what f of x was. f of x was the generating series for the Fibonacci numbers. It was uh, f0 plus f1x plus f2x squared. In general, it had the coefficient fn, the nth Fibonacci number, in front of x to the n. And so let's just match up the terms. F1 has to match with the linear term. F2 has to match with the quadratic term. In general, Fn has to match with the term, the coefficient of x to the n. And so that's what gives us, uh, so equating those terms there, that's what gives us uh, I'm going to erase the geometric series so that this can all be on the same, I'll be on the same page here. So, I sort of miss erasing in person. It was a really nice way of taking a break during a class just to erase the board. Okay, so, so what happens, so we then see that F, F0 is the constant term, and it's not there. F1 is this term, F2 is that term. And in general, Fn, let's match that up. Well, we have this one over root five hanging in the front, and now we've got a um, alpha to the n minus alpha bar to the n. This, these are the coefficients of x to the n. On the left-hand side, this is the coefficient of x to the n in the generating function for the Fibonacci sequence. And on the right-hand side, that's the coefficient of xn that we found through a lot of hard labor of first canceling all the terms and next solving using partial fractions and then understanding geometric series. Okay, and so that ends this highlight of chapters six and seven, which is understanding why the nth Fibonacci number is one over root five times one plus root five over two raised to the power n times one minus root five over two raised to the power n. So one thing that uh, I meant to do, but this video is already way long enough, is to do this for a general depth two linear recurrence relation. But all the steps are still the same. Uh, what The only thing that changes is the, the roots of the characteristic polynomial change and the coefficients a and b change, but the process is still exactly the same. All right, see you next time.